today we are visiting our farm fishery and this is the first licensed aquaponics farm in the city of Detroit. And so here at this facility we are producing tilapia and we are also doing herb production, mostly basil, microgreens and shoots. So this is a community development based business so you have to live in our target zip codes to work here. And what we're really doing is trying to improve work skills and trade relations as the green industry is building in the city. So by providing niche value agricultural skill set jobs, we're really putting our residents ahead of the game when it comes to building new business, building new industry in the city, and also learning about local food production. So going through, we'll kind of show you what the system does and how it's set up. Um, this used to be an old liquor store, so everything has been retrofitted to fit the space. So we have skylights put in place to get in natural daylight. We've had to scrape the floors out, new flooring, spray foam insulation all the way around, air, air heat exchanger, as well as reverse osmosis water we use. And so our system itself is run aeroponically, which is basically using aerified sprinklers to mist our plants from underneath. And the water we use is the nutrient-rich fish water that has been processed through the system and used to feed the plants. So you can take a look over here. So how we, how it all works is that we have a sprinkler system and this is nutrient-rich fish water that has been processed and filtered and it pumps upstairs. We emit it through the sprinklers for our aeroponic system. It oxygenates the roots and so we get explosive growth as you see here to the point where eventually they'll dip down into the reservoir and pick up the excess silt left behind from the fish waste. So as a holistic system, everything has to be unified. What's good for the fish has to be good for the plants and vice versa. So we use no antibiotics, no hormones, no, you know, no artificial sprays, no fertilizers that are artificial, no, no steroids, and non-GMO organic seed. So everything has to be done in a holistic sense because the system is closed loop. So anything that adversely affects one will adversely affect the other. So in this facility we are doing production mostly for restaurants, food distributors, hotels, businesses of that nature, pop-up chefs, food entrepreneurs, but we're also selling to the community through Peaches and Greens, our local produce store, as well as a variety of other retail markets and um, pop-up markets around the city. So we're doing basils mostly, lemon Thai and regular, because of how they fill out the space. For our type of system, it just works best. It works best for what we're doing. Um, but a variety of things can be grown in, in an aquaponic system such as this. We have a little bit of a uh, little bit of an infrastructure for how these actually work. So the built frames have light movers. The lights are adjustable up and down and they'll move back and forth on a motor to try to provide uniformity in growth for our basils. Uh, we do get some, like I said, we do get some sunlight coming down through the skylights, uh, more so for ambient daylighting. So after a certain number of harvests, the plants become non-viable and they get composted outdoors, in which case we'll bring in new plants to replace in the system. All the plants you see here, we start them by seed back here in our germination area. We buy from local and non-local organic seed suppliers. And um, again, you know, only, only input to the system really is the fish food itself. The fish provide the waste, the fertilizer, the nutrients for the entire system. At about a month and a half, the plants are large enough to implant to the system, which is what James is working on back here. Um, behind you on this side is our microgreen production area. So we're doing things like sunflower shoots, pea shoots, wheatgrass, uh, bean sprouts, pea shoots, as well as uh, microgreen mixes. So again, a very lucrative crop that is actually much higher in antioxidants and essential oils than the actual full-grown adult, full adult crop, and it's fast. 
So microgreens are used mostly for salads, soup sandwiches, stir fries, things like that. But the nutritional pack that they have is quite potent. So a different way of looking at how to really, really produce inside. What can you grow? How do you grow it? Versus just traditional annual vegetables that most people do outside. So if we keep going through down and around, This is where all of our fish breeding is done. So when you think about traditional tilapia stock, it's coming from China and it's coming from Latin America. And most of the time it is raised on manure, both human and pig, uh, raised in cages in waterways, lakes, streams, and rivers. And um, they're also heavily pumped with antibiotics and hormones just to keep them alive long enough to get to America where we can buy 10 fillets for three to four bucks. So there's a huge need for local fishery. And aquaponics is much more wide ranging than just fish. You can do shrimp, you can do eel, mussels, clams. Any aquatic life that provides enough waste to provide food for the plants will fit the system. So for us, um, we chose tilapia just for its production quality. Um, coming across seas, they usually have an issue with male-female ratios in offspring. Once females start breeding and producing eggs, they don't really grow, and so they lose their production value weight. So now the cost of the males doubles, because you have to remove the females from the system. So when they're babies, actually, the, the main procedure is to introduce sex-reversing hormones that will turn females into males. Here, we do not <laughs> we do not do that. So again, no antibiotics, no hormones, no steroids. None of that happens with the fish. We use organic, non-GMO food for the fish, and that's all they receive. So what we did is we had to kind of scour the country and find a good breeder set that would give us hybridized offspring that is fast growing and also creates a lot of meat on the fish. So traditional varieties of blue and white fish, blue and white tilapia, will give you 50-50 male, female offspring, which is why Chinese and Latin American markets will use those hormones. So what we've done by finding this breed, uh, this breeder from Florida, we are able to produce about 98% male offspring, which is a lot better than 50-50. So even when we do have mature females, we can remove them or sell them at a lower cost versus having to kill them or change the sex of them. So this is our breeder set right here. Um, the ratio is one male to five to eight females. And we have this density because male is very aggressive and he will kill the females if they won't breed with him. So you have to give him, to give him choices. What's very interesting is that tilapia are mouth brooders. So what will happen is they will mate in this pot here. The female will scoop up the eggs in her mouth and they will gestate in her mouth for about a week. After that time, we will remove her and put her in one of these delivery rooms here. As you can see, these are, these are about five weeks old, four or five weeks old. They come out at about a fruit fly size, fully formed, living, swimming, and they quickly grow up from there. So getting to this stage and this stage here as fingerlings, they're getting very close to being able to introduce to the main system. Back here we have our reverse osmosis filter. We use this primarily for the plants. All the plants get reverse osmosis water as well as our microgreens for their startup growth. We can also use the discharge water to replace and refill some of the fish tanks. Because after it's been filtered out and how we condition the water, it's totally safe and a lot more renewable than having to fill this with a hose or city water. So as the fish keep growing out, we transition them into different stages of growth for their feed and also for their stocking density. So for these baby tilapia here, they are, like I said, about six weeks old. Out of a total 32 week process is what we're looking at. From, from, egg to, from egg to plate. So the fish continue to grow out, and again, all we do is feed them. So the fingerlings will grow out, 
and after they've reached a certain weight and height, length, they get moved out here into the main frame. So this is the guts of the whole system here. This piping is bringing down the filtered fresh water that the plants clean and it dumps it back into the fish tank. Every, every tank is adapted with an airline tubing and this is how we oxygenate the water. So all of our excess waste water as well as fish food pours into this worm bed here. So just like your vermicompost garden out in your backyard, we are doing red wiggler production in this space. Now it looks kind of odd because it's in rocks, but as long as we provide moisture and nutrients, the worms will keep reproducing. As the bio breakdown happens, it passes through the worm bed here and into our biofilter on the back side there. And this is our biofilter. So this is basically a large surface area space for bacteria to grow and to help with the conversion of ammonia to nitrates. So the biofilter is a way to keep that sludge energy waste in the system without having to remove it. So as it passes through the gradient here, we have perforated piping that lies right underneath this bank edge and it pulls through our pump. So this is just a basic pool pump and this is what's supplying the whole system. We're in transition of switching to a pressure pump that will give us a greater output, a greater nutrient output with the misters upstairs. So the whole system is ran by the single pump. All of the water within the system recirculates. So our only losses are evaporation and transpiration from the plants. Everything else pretty much stays intact. There's about a thousand fish in this tank, another 1,600 in the tank behind you, and then what is that? another about 2,000 fish in that side of the system as young babies. So all, total in all, 4,500 to 5,000 fish are in the system at various stages. Um, just drawing them out. So this tank here on your right, they're anywhere from three to six inches I've seen and caught. On this side here, they're anywhere from five to 10 inches. And the 10 inches are much more what we're going to be able to harvest at, at the proper weight and time. We'll have a netted gate that will push from one side of the tank to the other, pushing them all into one area. After that, um, we'll be able to kind of rifle through, pick out which ones are the biggest, which ones fit the criteria for harvest. Being and using a previously used building creates its own challenges, especially with infrastructure and energy needs. But <clears throat> we've made it. We've made it work. So by changing the climate conditions, we can retain a lot more heat. Our our gas cost is very low. Our water costs are very low. Also, using an aeroponic system like us, we're using about five percent of traditional agricultural practices outdoors. So much better on that. Electricity is our main killer uh, because of our heated line here. So both tanks are heated through the worm bed. It runs over an element and drops down both tanks. Um, we do this because tilapia is a warm freshwater fish. They prefer 90 degrees, but you can keep it close to 80, not too much warmer, without hurting everyone in the store. Just because of the heat and the way humidity is trapped here, it's it very sticky very quick. <clears throat> but the next step would be to work on solar water heating. Getting that installed would allow us to maintain certain temperatures pretty much year round. Right now we have six employees total and we plan on quadrupling that number at full production base. So once all of the beds are planted upstairs, once we're at mass capacity and also harvesting and training, feeding, growing out the fish at the right capacity, we, I mean, we're going to be open 18 hours a day because you have to feed the fish every few hours. Our licensure through Michigan Department of Ag, we also have a special land use permit through the Detroit Urban Ag Ordinance because for the zoning, we've had to kind of retrofit what's happening and what we're using the building for. Um, with our license, we are, do not kill fish. We'll sell whole fish and they just get sent out on ice. About a little cooler over here to store some of our produce in between market days. And that works out pretty well for us, which is uh, taken from the University of Virgin Islands, their aquaponic system. It's all online. The PDF, it's all there for you. 
to research on your own if this is something you're interested in doing on a different type of scale. What would be best is to have a single plane, single level or layered building that spreads out wider. That would make transportation much easier, getting products to and from market, as well as being able to bring stuff you know, back from market.